morning. Have you ever wanted a protector? Someone who will watch over you and keep you safe from harm, a guardian angel of sorts who will make sure that you turn out just right? Well, unfortunately, I don't know how to help you with that, but I do know how to help your pottery. A kiln god. A kiln god is basically just a little creature or sculpture that you place on or in front of your kiln to help watch over the firing process. You see, when you work with clay, you have to fire it in a kiln, which is basically just a really hot oven. You do this so that the clay can become more durable, so that you can glaze it, which is kind of like painting, and so that the organic chemicals trapped inside the clay can be dissolved by the heat um, so that it makes it safer to use if you've made a plate or a cup or a bowl or anything like that. However, when you are firing things, there are so many different things that can go wrong. There's crazing, cracking, pinholes, and explosions. That's a lot, so let me explain. As I said earlier, one of the reasons you fire pottery is so that you can paint it. In ceramics, technically we call painting glazing. This is a little bit different as we don't use an actual paint, we use a glaze, which is meant to cure with the heat and develop with the heat. However, as you know, heat expands things. And that leads us to our first problem, crazing. Crazing occurs when the heat and expansive rates of the pottery don't match that of the glaze. This causes spider web like cracks to form across the glaze, which can be pretty big letdown, especially if that's not what you're going for. The next problem you have is pretty self-explanatory. That's going to be cracking. A crack is, as it sounds, a crack formed in the pottery. This is formed from a stress being applied to the pot itself. The next problem we have is pinholes. Pinholes are just little holes in your pottery that kind of look like pores. This is caused when there are gases trapped between the pot and the glaze, and they try to escape while the glaze is in its liquefied state from the heat, but they're unable to do so before the glaze crystallizes once the kiln has cooled. Last, we have yet another very self-explanatory problem, explosions. Explosions are, as it sounds, when a pot explodes in the kiln. Literally explodes. <laughs> this is caused when a moisture or air bubble is trapped inside the clay itself and is pretty devastating as it not only destroys itself, obviously it exploded, but it gets its fractures on other pots inside the kiln, which destroys them as well. All of that sounds pretty scary, I know, but that's why we make kiln gods. And kiln gods, they differ from culture to culture. In Western societies, they're placed on top of the kiln, for example, um, to watch over the firing process. While in China, they are placed in their own daost, or folk region temple, and that is always near the kiln. Chinese cultures like Zheng Dezhen and Hong Kong, they even worship and honor these gods as important deities to watch over the entire ceramic community, according to Marty Geiger Ho. Now, all that aside, making them is actually pretty simple. All you have to do is make a little character. That's it. But it does have to be something important to you. My favorite animal is a shark, and it always has been. So my kiln god was a little shark. And my best friend from that class, she made a little worm with a top hat to be its tongue. I also knew a girl who made just a regular corgi because she loved her dog, and a girl who made a mermaid. So it's that simple. Just make something that you like. Which is why it's a little difficult to show you exactly how to make your kiln god, but I will show you the basics by showing you how to make mine. The first thing you always have to do when working with clay is you have to wedge it. Wedging it helps to um, eliminate all the air bubbles inside the clay, which helps to make sure that it does not explode. So what you gotta do when you wedge it is you just kinda ball it around your hands like this for a minute and then you slam it down on a table. I don't wanna break my table, so I'm not gonna do that right now because this one's a little wobbly, but you slam it down on the table as hard as you can and then you have to fold it over itself. So you take your palm and you fold it on top and then over and you squish it down. This helps to eliminate all of the air bubbles inside your clay. Next thing you have to do is make the general shape of your kiln god. Mine's a shark, so I made a little shark body. Pretty simple, just the general shape of what you want, you add up from here. Whenever you're adding pieces on, like I'm gonna add the fin, the top fin next, you have to score and slip. Scoring is when you add little markings, deep markings across the surface that you're going to be adding stuff to. And this acts as a kind of Velcro connection because the you score both sides and so they stick together more likely. So
so that it's easier for them to attach in the kiln instead of fall apart. The next thing you have to do is slip them. Slip is made of old clay and water mixed together and it acts as a sort of glue. So you just take it and you literally just rub it on the little part that you just scored and then you attach it. All that's left to do now is add your little details and fire it and then you're done. You've got a kiln guide. In conclusion, making a kiln guide is not only very beneficial to your clay community, it's very fun. <laughs> So I hope that you all enjoy learning how to make a kiln guide and hope you get to go home and make your own. Thank you.